Hello to YouTube, this is the Spoonie Bard, and um, at the behest of the creator of Duffel Mask, I am doing a third part of the tutorial to show you guys actually how I make a song. Now, uh, you might notice that the color of the layout is different from the one that I used previously, and that's actually because this is the default skin. The one that I was using was a skin that I made, however it is available uh, here in Deflo Mask for you to use. It comes with the program, so if you like it, then you can have it. But anyways, um, so with that explanation out of the way, I'm going to be making a song uh, about... Mm, I'm trying to remember... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, here. I'm. I'm making some songs for Halloween to share with the users on the forum and I decided that I'm going to remix three tracks from Sweet Home and this is probably going to be released after I actually put up the songs so that uh, so that people will know how I made them. Anyways, um, so I'm going to be re remixing the ending of Sweet Home which is, and Junko Tamiya was the original composer for the game which by the way, that music was superb. Plus, a lot of it was actually pretty scary. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, Sweet Home is like a survival horror slash RPG game that was originally released for the Famicom in 1989. Naturally, we in North America never got it because it was just too gory for Air American eyes, but, yeah. Anyways, um, since Junko Tamiya, the composer for Sweet Home, also worked on Strider Hiryu, uh, I'm mostly going to be using instruments from this game as well. I've, I've, I've ripped all these instruments from the various songs in the game so that I can use them here. You know, like, I just need to find the right instruments to use. I need some soft tunes because it's a very melancholy melody. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Anyways, um. Okay, so. Here, I press the record button. Now I need to. Oops! That was a mistake. That happens very frequently. Okay. Now here, now we've got the basic melody, which I can remember off of the top of my head. However, I have a recording of the song on my phone that I'm going to use for a later reference because I can't really exit this window, which, because it would crash the entire tutorial if I did. But anyways, um, here, listen, here, listen closely. Obviously, the tempo is supposed to be slower, so I need to find the right tempo. Alright, maybe just a tiny bit slower. That sounds about right, I guess. Yeah. And you're actually, the funny, the very difficult thing about remixing this song using these instruments is that uh, Strider Here to You has a very sort of grand orchestral arrangement to it, whereas whereas most of the songs in Sweet Home could probably be performed using a string quartet, so it's it's difficult to find exactly the right instruments to use. I'm mostly just I'm probably just mostly going to be using string instruments because it, because they sound the best with the song. Okay. Alright, in here. I'm I'm listening to this over and over again to make sure that I've got the right melodies. Alright, that's too high. Alright, and it could also serve to be a little bit quieter as well, so... 
I'm gonna I'm gonna bump these down to 21. Okay, so TL is basically the volume level. Okay, now for the bass line, which is just a single note, so there's not much to go over there. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, set the rest of these to zero because none of them are used yet. Okay, and most of the time I do keep this. Most of the time I do keep this instrument window in just this instrument. I keep it at just the instrument window just because I um, just so that I can switch to them when I need to. I can't remember if it if that was how that pattern ended. Okay, yeah, it was. It's a bit difficult to scan through the recording to find this stuff because of how small my screen is. Okay, so it was just a single note at the end of that one. Okay, so, so far we've got uh, two patterns, now we do another one. I've listened to this song enough times that I have a decent memory about how it goes, so I'm probably not going to be stopping the writing process to check my phone too much. I have like a basic concept of the main melody and the bass line, but anything in between, like that super high violin line, that I do not 100% remember. Alright, and here. At, also, at the end of that pattern, there's like a slight decrease in volume from the two main instruments. And only those two instruments because, well, the triangle channel on the NES is incapable of having different volume levels other than on or off, as I explained in the last part of the tutorial. So, for this, I'm going to use the volume command to uh, soften them a little bit. And I'm also going to go back to step number one so that I can... Yeah, though obviously this means I'm going to have to reset both the volume levels on the in the next pattern. <sighs> okay, so so far I've got the first four bars, and I already know they all sound all right. So now because the um, because the main melody actually repeats itself another for the next four bars, now uh, I'm going to copy these four into here and make some slight alterations to this uh, channel, the second one, because it actually does change. So, so now they're all new patterns. And also the baseline changes on this pattern here, so I'm gonna change that as well. Okay, now the bass line becomes more active in this part where it goes da, 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 instead of simply holding one note like in this pattern.
Wait, I think the melody actually changes because that doesn't sound right. It does, I remember now, okay. Baseline wrong. Let me check that one again. That's how that goes. copy the volume envelope from here you know, it's not really a volume envelope and more just the effect or value I should say that's really the proper term okay now I just need to remember what notes go in here because in this part of the song the notes get really clustered together so it's not exactly very easy to produce by ear I mean normally I read this off of uh, NSF importer which is like a, a separate branch of fama tracker but um, yeah, now I don't have any visuals, so I'm just going to have to do it entirely by ear. And it actually wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Okay, got eight bars. And now from this point on, it's actually almost entirely uh, a new uh, melody line, which is actually uh, repeated from the main theme of the game, which plays at the beginning. But um, anyways, now for the final part. Um, I'm wondering if I should. I'm wondering if I should include the flute in there. I think maybe it'll be fine. Here and there was another flute in there, but it has but it has like a harmonic thing in, about it. It's more like a um, it's more like a pan flute, I guess. So let's bump up the volume on this. And play pattern allows me to loop the this section of the song over and over again. Okay, so then the string line that is backing all this up goes down a note. Oh wait, I just figured out why it's quieter than it should be. Yeah, sometimes I forget about that. You know, let's put a little bit of uh there also I'm I'm editing these graphs here because they because if you turn the low frequency oscillator on on the uh on uh the arcade module then it causes vibrato. But right now I don't have it on, so uh, let's fix that, why don't we? Okay, I'm going to set the wave here. And this is one of the effects. This 18 is the uh, low frequency operator oscillator uh, waveform. If you set it to zero, it's a sawtooth wave. 
If you set it to 1, it's a square wave. If you set it to 2, it's a sine wave. And if you set it to, um, if you set it to 3, it's a, it's a noise wave, which is typically used... Which, this effect was actually used in a lot of Capcom games to make, like, wind noises and, like, chimes out of stuff that would normally sound like just a sine wave pizzicato. But anyways, uh, now, I now I need to choose a speed, and I'm thinking maybe it should be, like, uh... I'm trying to remember exactly what value the, um... I'm trying to remember what value the game, the songs in Strider used. Okay, it's getting a bit out of tune there, so I'm gonna try and, um... Too fast. Okay, that's a bit too... that's a bit too much. That's a bit too heavy vibrato. That sounds a bit more like it. Alright, and here, because I'm actually, because I actually set the cello to follow that law as well, I'm going to just place it right at the beginning. I did do that, right? Okay, yeah, and uh, I'm assuming it's also going to have too heavy vibrato. Yep, too heavy. Okay, let's bring it down a little bit. That's much better. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm trying to remember, uh, here. actually, I've got a calculator on my phone, and I didn't even realize it until now, but I can actually calculate, uh, what the triplets are for this. So five, which is the speed of the song, times eight, which is the number of rows between, uh, markers, is 40. And that divided by 3 is 13. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't exactly help me, but uh, it's better It's better than no information. And then here I use this, de this uh, delay effect in order to get the triplets. Alright, that looks good. And here, I can just copy this over and then just, um, switch it out with the, uh, wait, no, that's not the instrument. That's the instrument, okay. Yeah, because each of these has a value, and I just change them to change the instrument. Okay. Now I don't remember if the I don't remember if the backing line changes again after this, but I'm going to check. That changes the B flat minor. Alright, and, um, so now it's going to get a little bit more complicated, but thankfully I can use the triplet values from here for reference. Here, it goes at a, sl the triplets play at a slightly slower rate now, or should I say, like, they play at half the rate. So instead of, it's more like, they're playing at half the speed now, so I have to... And so this is actually how I do it. I take each uh, triplet value and I... And I just... Um, 
I use every second value in this time. Or actually, should I say, or no, every odd numbered value. So it's, so it would be like one, three, five, one, three, five, as opposed to one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's, it probably sounds a bit confusing, but trust me, I know what I'm doing. Okay, now the song ends on just one final note, and it should be relatively easy to pin down. Now I just do one final fade out. Oh, uh, wrong value. Did I forget to, did I forget to reset the volume again? I did. I literally just realized that. Except now it's too loud, so I'm just gonna... I'm just going to do it here. And actually, I guess I should uh I guess I should copy this here as well. And now for when the song loops, I'm going to reset them all back to 7F. And that's it. Now, um, actually, no, that's not quite it. Um, you see, there's a bunch of different channels to use, and Strider here to you. Actually, for most of its songs, it didn't use all eight channels. It actually used only six of them. So I need to somehow add at least three more channels to this. And I think, and you're like, one is easy. I can just add a, I can just add an echo effect to this. And then if I and then if I reduce this to a volume below what it normally is, then I can uh, then I don't have to worry too much about um, I don't have to worry too much about having to rewrite everything. And I in here I, if I'm gonna do an echo pattern, then I have to make sure that these patterns line up. And here, sometimes these um, sometimes these uh, notes actually overlap into the next pattern if the echo is delayed enough. So I have to add the notes into the next pattern myself. And here, I have to adjust these volume levels accordingly as well, because if I don't, then it just snaps back up to the regular value. And so you get like a popping val you get like a popping volume effect. 
which of course is not what we want. We want it to fade out just like the other one. Okay, and then I can add the, I can basically just add the rest of the values in there as necessary. And we can go back to this pattern for the appropriate volume uh, values, just as we did before. Actually, you know what, I'm going to switch this over to be an echo of this channel instead. And now I add this volume value into here. gives it a little bit more depth. All right, now I'm going to start adding extra arrangements into here. And typically, typically basically all you need is just a chord. Sometimes I find the best melodies just by complete accident. Oh wait, I didn't even realize I placed it on a pattern that I'm not using for most of the song. Alright, well here, typically the shortest way to do that is simply to change the is simply to cut everything and then paste them back in the patterns. It's it takes a little bit to get things just right, but I'm I mean this is just sort of how I write songs. I usually experiment with things to see what I find. And now to counteract the fact that the so that those notes are still playing, I place off notes at the very beginning, which is done by pressing tab. I feel like I could have explained that better in the previous videos. But anyways, I think I'm just about done. So I'm going to give it one more listen and then see if I've uh, see if I'm satisfied.
Well, color me, color me satisfied. I think I've done a fantastic job here. And true, I think maybe some people might find the chord changes that have been done on the uh, on these last two channels here kind of dissonant. But I, but really, if you think about it, I think it fits within the creepy vibe of the game. Man, I'm proud of myself right now. I say that this is finished. And so you've saw, you've seen how I make a song, or at least a remix anyway. When it comes to original songs, it's very very different. But that process would take a lot longer to explain. So anyways, uh, thank you for watching. And hopefully now that you have a better idea about how songs are made, at least by me, then you too can, you too can make some masterpieces of your own. So this is the Spoonie Bard, signing off for the final time.